three bits of software I'm using to post-process Mars are PIPP, which is pre-processing software. And what that does is it crops around each frame of your AVI file, making the file sizes a bit more manageable for stacking. Also, it allows you to stitch multiple AVIs together. So that's really useful if you've got a non-tracking mount like the, the little tabletop Dobsonian of my last video where I was capturing the planets with that. It actually gives the appearance that you're actually using a tracking mount and that's because it's cropping around each frame at the same distance to the planet. So that's really useful. So I'd always recommend using PIPP. The next bit of software I'm gonna use is AutoStackR after that. And that's where we actually stack all our good frames. We choose and stack all our good frames. The reason I don't just jump straight to Registacks because that also does the stacking and as well as the stacking, it, you can actually do some post-processing is because Auto stack art just seems a bit more user friendly. It gives you a bit more quantitative control over what you're using as your reference frame because it analyzes your frame and it picks the best ones quantitatively rather than you have to just scrub through looking at them visually and trying to work out what the best one is to use as your reference frame. So I, I, quite, I quite like it really. I think Auto Stack Art is better than Registacks, but Auto Stack Art doesn't have the wavelets at the end where you can do the post-processing and whatnot that Registax have. So the combination of the two I find better. Anyway, that was a bit of a long-winded explanation. I hope you're still with me. So let's crack on. So in this folder here, I've got some files that I captured yesterday of Mars. Some are RGB24 and some are the RAW8. So I'm gonna start with the the RGB24 files and we'll, we'll take a look at those. So if I open up PIPP, go to file, add source file, um, I just need to remember which ones they are, I think it's these two, and um, I'll open those, I'll stick that over there, make it look a bit better for you guys. So, you know, I mentioned that in PIPP you can actually join, you can stitch AVIs together, which is useful if you've not got a tracking mount. This is the bit here where it says join mode, so you need to click on that. We're doing planet, so click planetary. I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible, so we're going to go straight to do processing and start processing. That's our output file with the extension PIPP, so it lets us know that's the file with the PIPP processing. I'm going to copy that and just put it on my desktop next to my Mars folder. Ta -da. Let's have a look at that. Let's open up another look and you'll be able to see what I mean. So it's cropped around each frame, so it gives us a zoomed in effect. Something nice about seeing kind of live video as opposed to a still image. Anyway, let's crack on. So the next thing to do is open up Auto Stack Art for our stacking. And we'll open up our PIPP file. You can see it there. We just basically run through these steps here. So we've opened it. Now we want to go to Analyze. got planet selected there. So this graph gives us a line of best fit through the best to the worst frames. If you hold down control and click along where you're willing to accept, so if I say these are the best frames and I don't want to accept any beyond sort of that point there, what it does it gives us a percentage of the frames we've chosen in this box here. So we've, we're choosing 31% of the frames. I've also selected TIFF as my output. 
I've put Mars in the field, so it gives it a Mars file name extension. And you also want to go into color, and if you're using RGB24, you select RGB. But if you selected RAW 8 with my camera, I'd have to use, because I'm using an ASI385 by ZWA. I think the Bayer pattern for that is RGGB, but it's also got Bayer patterns for different cameras there. So what you have to do is just flick through them and pick the right one for your camera and you can see how it affects the image in real time so anyway we're using rgb24 when we captured it so we go to rgb and you can see that's given us pretty much the right colors there and um, we've analyzed our frame we've picked the best frames to stack you can also you can, I mean you can do four different percentages and output four different files with different percentages of frames used but i'm just going to stick with the first the first one I'm just using 31 percent of the frames you can drizzle but that's only recommended if you're under sampling and i'm not sure i was so i'm just going to keep it off which i think is usually recommended and the next thing to do is place AP grid. You can do it manually, but I like to use the grid and it just selects some alignment points and then we can go to stack and then it will do the stacking. And at that point we can go to file and save stack as. And because we've now been through PIPP and auto, auto stack art, I'm going to put a little underscore file extension of stack art so we know exactly what that file's been used um, been through so far. We'll put that on the desktop. I don't know why it's doing it as a PNG when I selected TIFF, but hey ho, figure that out at a different point. Right, let's have a look at that on the desktop. We can get rid of all that. I think that's the one there. So we'll put all our files in a row. So we've got original shortcut files in there. We've got the ones, the RGB24s that we've run through PIPP, pre-processing software. And now we've stacked 31% of the fr good frames in auto stack art. So if I open that up, we can have a look at that. So that's what the image looks like. If you can see, it looks a little bit soft. So what we can do is a bit of post-processing in Registax, so Registax 6, open that up. By the way, all these bits of software are free to download, just literally put in Google, it will take you to the download page. All very straightforward to download, so I won't run through that. Uh, let's open that a bit wider, full screen. And we'll go to select, we want our stack art file. And this is where we can play about with the image and try and make it look nice. These bits here are wavelets, it's like a graphic equaliser, so we can just tweak those. Um, but because Mars looks really small, it might be quite difficult to see what's going on. So we can also go over to here and hit view zoomed, and that will give us a much bigger picture to sort of look at as we're making these adjustments. It's really easy to get carried away with this and over sharpen it. So a light touch is needed to keep it looking somewhere natural. You know what? I think that's probably... Let's play with it a little bit more. Ooh, is that overdone it? Bring it back a bit. Yeah. If you look at this zoomed in panel, and we can see that we've got like red fringing on the top and green at the bottom and there's two reasons for that. The first is I was using an achromatic refractor that kind of doesn't compensate for the primary wavelengths of light and you get kind of like chromatic aberration. Secondly, it's atmospheric dispersion which kind of splits up the channels a little bit. So what we can do is go to RGB align and if I show you what this does by just going extreme left, you can align your your primary red, green and blue channels to where they need to be. So we'll put that back. 
So looking at it, the red's at the top, so if I move down a couple, that seems to have fixed it. So that's a way of compensating for atmospheric dispersion in Registacks, which is quite useful. Other things we can do are adjust like the contrast and the brightness. I think something like that's okay. We can also look at the histogram as well and we can like stretch it and things. Yeah, about there. So when you're happy with everything, I mean there are other things you can do, you can flip and rotate the image. You can crop, you can mess about with the colours, all sorts, masking. But those things are the things that I generally do. Um, when you're happy, you just hit do all and then save image. And I'm just going to add a file extension of Registax so we can see with that file, we've ran it through PIPP, pre processing software. And then gone into the stacking software, which is Auto Stack Art, and then done post processing in Registacks. So, this file extension tells you everything you need to know, apart from that it's Mars. So probably put Mars at the front there. And it's a TIFF 16 bit RGB. Hit save, and then we're finished. Let's go and have a look at our image on the desktop. I'll minus that for now, just in case I need to make any changes. Computer's working hard, so it's getting a bit stuck. So I'm also screen capturing. That's actually come out a little bit darker than I thought. Um, let's zoom in and have a look. But there we have it. That is an image of Mars taken with a short tube achromatic refractor. And we've compensated a little bit for the atmospheric dispersion, the chromatic aberration. You can see the polar cap, and you can see the dust storms on the surface of the red planet. This kind of bright feature here is quite interesting. Not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe it's like the sunlight reflecting off the planet or something, I'm not sure. Well, obviously it is, because that's how we're seeing the image, but you know, more so. Anyway, if you want to see any more tutorials, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification, and I'll see you in the next one.